All right, so we're up to chapter 13, and let's start taking a look at key issue one. Why do services and businesses cluster in the downtown area? Now, first of all, the CBD is a very, very dense area. The central business district is less than 1% of all the urban area, and it tends to be the focal point in a region, the node. It's basically where it's all happening at, and it, and it wants to be in the middle of where all the people are. That way, it's equal distance. That should sound a lot like Chris Stoller in Central Place Theory. The idea that everything's going to be located in the middle of where the people live. Now, there are two main types of services that are usually located in a downtown. You have your retail and you have your business. First, let's look at retail. Number one, you have a high threshold uh, business located there. Traditionally, this was department stores. Your department store like Macy's or Penny's or Sears, that was always in the downtown. But as suburbs grew, we will study that later, businesses start moving to the suburbs where the people are. And that's where we start seeing malls grow and the department stores grow, go to where the malls are and they leave the downtowns. Today, we typically see more unique things there like sports, art museums, history museums. Those tend to be the high threshold services located in a downtown. The next thing we're gonna look at is high range things. These again are more unique items. This could be like Banyol Hall in Boston, the Pike Place Market in Seattle, in San Francisco, it could be the Ferry Building. It's things that are very unique to that area that people are willing to drive a large distance to get to. Finally, we look at where the downtown worker services are. So these are services that are going to focus in on the downtown worker. So this could be like an office supply store. This could be a coffee shop like Starbucks. It could be food. So you have your restaurants for workers to get uh, dinner or lunch at, dry cleaning services. Things that, that will attract the worker on the way to the parking lot uh, when he's leaving work. The other thing that besides retail services that we see is business services. This could be like lawyers. Journalists tend to be in a downtown, so they're equal distance from all the action of what can go on. Uh, banks and finance will tend to be in the downtown region, at least the headquarters of those. Courthouses and centers of government will tend to be in the downtown area. Because again, they want to be equal distance from everybody that they serve. All right, next thing we're going to look at is the competition for land in a CBD. Again, a CBD is very, very compact land. So there's going to be a lot of competition for it. Because of that, it makes it more expensive. So because of that, we typically see buildings go upward. Um, a couple things that you typically don't see in a downtown area are factories and residencies. And that is because when we look at factories, it's because they tend to do better when they're wide. You don't want to build very high because that makes it more expensive to build a product. Well, because you want to go wide with your factory, downtown's not a good area for it. Also, with people wanting to live down there, you don't see a lot of residents downtown because you've got smaller area. So for an 800 square foot apartment, what it costs for an 800 square foot apartment in a downtown, you can get a two or 3,000 square foot house with a yard in the suburbs. So people who live downtown tend to be in a little bit more of a cramped area. We also typically see intensive land use. So what that means is you're going to build up and down. You're going to build skyscrapers to go up or you're going to build down into the ground. And for those that live in some cities, you know you have parking garages that can be four, five, six, ten stories down into the ground. You have subways, your power lines, your telephone lines, your water lines. Everything's underground to clear it away from the street area where it's very expensive to put things. Finally, we get the skyscraper. Now, the skyscraper is a very important thing to understand. That gets built in the late 1800s. Because of the elevator and steel, we're able to start building these Goliath buildings that stretch upward. Prior to that, you had to stop at about 10 to 12 stories because the bricks couldn't sustain the weight. Now we have buildings that are 80 stories plus. At the bottom area is your very expensive area. That is where your retail shops are, where it's close to the public your restaurants, your office supply stores, your dry cleaners, that tends to be at the bottom of a skyscraper. The middle area tends to be offices, and many times at the very top, you're gonna to see apartments where they have the panoramic view of the downtown, but they're gonna be smaller areas. So that shows how we have the competition for land uh, in the CBD, you typically build up and down. Now, in talking about CBDs, there's two major uh, activities that are typically excluded from them. The first is a lack of industry. Now, traditionally, there was industry in the downtown area in that CBD. 
especially along waterfronts if they are where waterfronts located there. But as time moved on, we mentioned that industry needs to spread out. It needed wider land and it just wasn't economically feasible in a CBD. So what we started seeing is waterfronts developed and were converted into shops, restaurants, and hotels. I, uh, retailers that could bring in a lot more money and a higher tax base than industry did. We also will see residents will not be typically located in a CBD. Originally they were, and originally in America, uh, wealthier people lived in that downtown area. But what we saw is some push and pull factors come into play. The push factors was that their poverty started moving into a downtown CBD area. Uh, there was overcrowding. Uh, land rent started to go down because you shoved so many people into a small area that it became undesirable. So even though that the land was worth a lot of money, they shoved so many people into a space that the living conditions became poor and thus uh, a lot of the wealthier people moved to the suburbs. We also see pull factors moving, pulling people into the suburbs and that was larger houses and better schools. Now in some ways we see a flip of that. We start seeing more money move back into downtown areas. We're starting to see empty nesters, people whose children have grown up, moved away, moved into downtowns, and young people that don't have family yet will move into these downtown areas where they don't mind a smaller apartment. So finally, we're going to look at CBDs outside North America. It's a little bit different when you're there. First of all, in CBDs outside of North America, you see most of your commercial in the downtown area. Whereas in North America, a lot of the commercial has moved, like um, stores have moved to the suburbs and malls, most of those are contained in the downtown area in um, other areas of the world. Uh, we also typically will see churches or royal palaces in the downtown area. And that's the focal point. Instead of the skyscraper, it's one of those types of buildings. We also will see a lot more residency in downtown areas uh, outside of North America. Now because most people will live in the downtown area, especially middle class, upper class, you're going to see more bakeries there, you're going to see more food shops there, you're going to see the butcher there, you're going to see more stores there. Also, in a lot of the um, places outside of North America, they're going to discourage vehicles in the downtown area. Now this could be done through swift, severe tolls like in London, or it could be them closing off streets so that cars don't have access and pedestrian traffic can move around. So typically what we see is outside of North America, it's more your middle and upper class that live in downtowns and you typically see a more walkable area where the shops and stores are.